Hey everybody, welcome back. And so in today's video, I want to show you guys how you can use a VPN in Call of Duty Warzone. So if you're trying to maybe switch up your lobbies, if you want to perhaps fix your lag issues, a lot of people are having ping issues with their own servers. So they want to connect to perhaps better servers using a VPN. Of course, there are a few things to keep in mind when using a VPN in general with gaming, not just for Warzone. And that's what I'm going to get into today. Now, if at any point, you want to check out any of these VPNs, you'll find all the useful links in the description down below, whether you're looking for pricing, discounts, or reviews. Okay, so we've got Warzone right here. Now I can use Express, Nord, or Surfshark, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. I've tested over a couple of dozen VPNs and I've narrowed it down to these three as the best overall. Now they all vary in budgets and features, so you can pick and choose depending on your situation and what you're looking for, but it's super simple. Now, one thing that you might want to keep in mind is you want to make sure that your Steam is closed completely. So you just want to shut it off and from there you want to connect to the vpn server now over here i have the locations of the warzone server now this is useful because depending on where you are you just want to make sure that you're connecting to the vpn server that is closest to your game server okay so let's just say you're in a country that doesn't exactly have a warzone server in it and maybe that's why you're lagging so let's just say maybe you're in portugal and you're having problems with your ping and maybe your isp is not really giving you the best of packages, especially for gaming, and you're just not having a really good time. So what you want to do here is connect to the VPN server. So in this case, the closest game server is in Spain. Now, maybe in Portugal, if you're connecting to Spain through the ISP server, you're getting very high ping and you're just not having a good time. So if you connect to the Spanish server right here on, let's just say, ExpressVPN, you're going to be closer to the game server. So you're going to be eliminating the distance between between your VPN server and your game server, making sure that you get the best ping possible. And so once you figure out the locations out, you want to go back to one of these VPNs, no matter which one it is. I actually like to go with ExpressVPN because it's super easy to use and it's very consistent in my experience. So we're gonna go here and just go to Spain and connect to the Madrid server since Warzone has a server there. So now once we've done that, we're going to click on the Madrid server and just connect to the VPN. Now, if we go to what is my IP address, you'll notice that it's going to say I am in Madrid. So this is how you can double check. Now in the settings, I want to make sure that you guys also know about this. So go to downloads and make sure that the download region is also the same. Now it seems like recently it changes automatically depending on your location, so you don't have to change it manually. So just go to downloads and make sure that it is in the same location as your connected server and you should be good to go. But other than that, just go to Warzone and you'll be able to go ahead and play Warzone with a VPN, hopefully with the lowest ping possible. And that's basically it. It's really all about finding the closest VPN server to your game server so that you can minimize ping as much as possible. And that's how you use a VPN for Call of Duty. Now, if you're wondering about which one to use, then let me tell you more about my top three best VPNs for Warzone. And so I've been testing out some of the most popular VPNs out there, and I've narrowed them down to ExpressVPN, NordVPN, and Surfshark as my top three picks overall. Now, all three VPNs work remarkably well with streaming services. They provide some of the best speeds, they're very easy to use, and they also have the necessary security features, such as a kill switch, split tunneling, and a bunch of protocols. But of course, they still vary in what features they offer and how much they cost, and picking out the best service for you will depend on what you're looking for in a VPN. So let me break down each service individually to help you make a more informed decision. First up, we have ExpressVPN, which is overall the best pick as it came first in most major categories like speed, security, and privacy. Now, in terms of reliability, ExpressVPN has proven its commitment to protecting user data several times by conducting many audits over the years. On top of going through a real-life stress test where the Turkish government sees one of its servers in an ongoing investigation, only to find nothing that can be linked to any specific user. Now, other than that, ExpressVPN has over 3,000 servers in 105 countries, allowing you to access almost any content from all around the world. 
But what's so impressive about these servers is their consistency and reliability. Whether I'm streaming, gaming, or torrenting, I've had great speeds and uninterrupted connections. And besides being super simple to use, my favorite thing about ExpressVPN is how responsive it is across all devices. Launching the app only takes a few seconds and connecting to any server takes a single second or less, which isn't something that I can say about any other VPN. And so if you're looking for the overall best, fastest, and most reliable VPN out there, ExpressVPN is your go-to. Next up, we have NordVPN, which offers the most value for money out of the three options. It's got some bonus features that make it a little bit more than just a simple VPN. Such features include threat protection, which blocks ads and malware-ridden websites, and also protects your device from harmful files. And in terms of speeds, NordVPN actually rivals ExpressVPN, especially when it comes to gaming and overall performance. Although it's got over 6,000 servers in 61 countries, so 44 less countries, which means access to less content content than Express. But more servers will mean that the user base is more widely spread across the servers, so basically more room for everyone to use. And another thing I really liked about NordVPN is its intuitive user interface, which has a huge map of all of its servers, allowing you to pick and choose the closest server to you with a couple of clicks. And when it comes to device limits, NordVPN allows you to protect up to six devices with one subscription. And finally, we have Surfshark, which is gonna be the best budget VPN on this list. Because unlike ExpressVPN and NordVPN, Surfshark allows you to protect an unlimited number of devices under one subscription, which is great for households and businesses. Now, it might not be as fast as these two, but it offers the essential VPN features on top of some bonus ones, like an ad blocker, two type of specialty servers, as well as no borders mode and rotating IP, which can be very useful in restrictive countries. Not only that, but it offers a huge server list of over 3,200 servers in 100 countries, which gives it a lot of value. And so if you're looking for the best budget VPN that allows unlimited simultaneous connections on top of having the core features of a VPN, Surfshark is your go-to. So to sum it up, if you're looking for the overall best, fastest, and most reliable service with arguably the best privacy policy out there, ExpressVPN is easily your go-to option. NordVPN is going to be the one to get if you're looking for a well-rounded VPN that offers bonus features while maintaining great performance and security for a reasonable price. And finally, we have Surfshark, which is the best budget VPN as it allows for unlimited connections and it offers the core features of a premium VPN at the cheapest possible cost. Again, if you guys are interested in any of these VPNs, you'll find links to pricing and discounts in the description down below, as well as full reviews if you'd like to learn a little bit more about them. Also, just out of curiosity, I actually spoke with Express, and they mentioned that a lot of people end up spending more on the monthly renewals than they would have with a yearly plan. Because basically, the typical pattern is that people renew monthly, you know, thinking they don't need it that long. But unfortunately, they end up spending more more money than they would have going with a yearly plan, especially with the discount code we provided down below. So really, if you know that you're not going to need Express for longer than let's just say a month, you should definitely get the month plan. But if there's a chance that you might end up using it longer than a month, you might want to go with a year plan. And then if you changed your mind or you know you realize you don't need it that long, you can always get a refund and go back to just a month at a time plan. And that's pretty much it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful day.